shocking is the day that Joe Biden takes office. <laughs> Some things are going to start to unfold right away. You got to understand that Joe Biden was in the Senate for over 40 years. Joe Biden has deep friendships with Republicans and Democrats. And Republicans like Mitch McConnell, who he's been friends with for many, many decades, these people are going to have decided, I would imagine, that they need to work together to make things happen on a bipartisan basis in order to heal the country from what was Donald Trump. So things are going to get accomplished because it's within the best interest of the Republicans and the Democrats. And because of the relationships that Biden has had in the Senate, he will be able to make phone calls and say, yo, man, let's get on board with this one, or I need you on that. He will be able to work and operate within the Senate, which is Republican control, because no matter what you say, the United States of America is afraid of far left policies. They are afraid of the Green New Deal. They are afraid of the tax implications. They are afraid of the quote unquote radical left, which is headed up by, or the d- democratic socialism, which is headed up by Bernie and AOC and Tlaib and Omar, and others, they are, America is afraid because if they weren't afraid, there would have been a flip of the Senate, and the Senate is not going to be flipped to the Democrats. The Republicans are going to hold the Senate. The races that were the most, uh, that were the closest were the guy in North Carolina, that Tom Tillis, that old white dinosaur, he somehow hold on to his seat. Well, I'll tell you why, because is the guy, the Democrat that was running against him, Cunningham, couldn't keep his dick in his pants and fucked everybody but his wife for the last two years, and he got caught. So that fucking seat went down. This Georgia seat, the Purdue guy, we, you know that uh, the good-looking uh, 30-something-year-old dude named Asaf who ran for thing and lost? Well, he's going to get fucking beat again. This guy's done. Two and done. You're out. So we lost that seat. The seat in Iowa, Joni Ernst, We thought that that was not on any level in danger ever. She won. Then you look at the broad up in Maine. What's her fucking face? Uh, What's her name? Uh, 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 What's her face? Fucking, I'm forgetting. Woman that can do anything and still get elected. That's her fucking name. This woman, like, all over the map, did wasn't a, what's her fucking name again? Collins. She didn't lose a seat. I think the only seats we won were in Colorado. Hickenlooper took down Gardner, and McSally lost to that sweet guy, Joe Kelly. And everybody else, we just got beat. So as it sits, as of right now, I believe, and I think we might lose it in Michigan. My point to all of this is this. This was not a blue wave. I believe we had a chance to pick up 21 seats in the House and we only and we didn't pick up any. Or we lost some. Peters is in a dogfight for his life in Michigan. That could be another Republican flip. The point to all of this is that the pandemic has not seemed it didn't seem to I mean I, I, people are f- are kind of all right with how they are. They kind of like the direction the country's going. And they didn't want any new, crazy, blue wave scenario. Everybody sort of held on to their own with the exception of a couple of flips. And the President of the United States was voted out of office, I believe, because people were tired of the madness.